Welcome. My name is Mark. I'm one of the pastors here at C3. If you're new, we're so glad you're here today. And I want to welcome you here in what we call the West Venue. And then we have a bunch of people over in the East Venue, and those are online. So we're so glad that you're here today. Um, now, if you are new um, today, uh, we are ending today uh, this, this thing that we've been talking about, the series, and we're talking about relationships for the last four weeks, and today we're going to kind of talk about some stuff today about that as well, and then t- next week we're going to start something else. Uh, but today we're going to talk... We're going to talk about a lot of different things, and we're going to talk about morals, actually. Uh, so what are morals? Now, I looked, in the, the, I looked on and looked and found out that it means that standards of behavior or beliefs concerning what is or is not acceptable. So we stop and we think and we go, where should we get our morals? We sh- sometimes when you're kids, you're thinking you get your morals because of your parents, Right? But the reality is we, if we are followers of Jesus Christ, we should have our morals from God because God talks a lot about these things through Scripture. So this is one of the things we're going to talk about. So, so now we're talking about relationships, and one of the things I'm going to talk about is that, you know, can, can a person just jump from one bed to another bed and not hurt himself or anybody else, and does it really matter? Well, I'm going to tell you, God says it, it matters. It matters. What about adultery? Some of you have had that happen. Some of you, you had, you, you've been married, and all of a sudden, your spouse left and is having an f- affair. And all of a sudden, you're going, what is going on? This is so hard. I mean, it's a tough thing to think about. But some people think, now, nah, you know, yeah, I, I was married, but, you know, you know, but I really want to see this other person over here, and that is not God's heart. Now, let me just pause for a second. Um, if you are, did you just walk into the church and thinking, oh, there's some coffee and stuff, and that, that's totally fine. Um, but here's the thing I want you to understand, is that if you are a follower of Jesus Christ, we're going to talk about some heart things today. Um, if you are not a follower of Jesus Christ, You can do whatever you want. We're talking about people that have a relationship with God, something about what he wants us to do. And this is one of the things, when it comes comes to talking about um, adultery, we look at that and we go, oh, that's not a big deal. God goes, it's a big deal. It's a very big deal. This is not God's heart. And there's other things like that. There's porn, there, there's lust. There's all such a, so many things all over the place that we are just, just always looking at all these stuff and we try to get away from it. But it's just everywhere in the world, it seems like, any more. It's just so hard. But God, but God says, I want you to have my morals. I want you to do the right thing. I want you to do what I, God, want you to do. Because I, I created the world, God says. I created the world. I created everything. I created you. I created how your life is supposed to be. But you're going the other direction. And that is not my heart. That's what God is saying. That's not my heart for you. I want you to come back to me. I want you to come to me for the first time. I want you to just be there. I love you. And I want you to do the right things. Wow. We think, oh, you know, porn, that's not, that's not no big deal. That's no big deal. Though. God says different. God says different. Let me give you a verse. Um, Philippians 1.10. This is Paul speaking. and Paul says this. I want you to understand what really matters so that you may live what? And? That's right. That with pure and blameless lives until Christ returns. That is God's heart. That is what God wants us to do. God wants us to have a pure and a blameless life. This is God's heart for you and for me. And some people say, well, well you, know, you know, if it feels good, do it. God says no. 
well, it's, it's my body. It's my body. I'm not hurting anybody. It's, it's, just, you know, it's just my body. I mean, what, what's wrong with that? And besides, you know, you, know, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't buy a car unless you try, drive it around, right, before you bought it, right? Yeah, that's true. But you don't want a car with 300,000 miles on it, do you? So you've got to stop and think, what is wrong going here? What's, what's, what's wrong here? We, listen, I've got to be honest. I think most of us probably know that these things we're talking about is not God's heart. That's not God's heart. God doesn't want you to have an affair or have sex to somebody that you think you might get married to. No. That is not what we're doing. That's not what God is calling us to do. So we're going to talk today about some stuff. Whew. Because this is the last, this is the last week of the series. And I'm going to hit us all a bunch. Because this is tough. This is tough stuff. Scripture is so, talks so much about this stuff. We have to get this right. If we're a follower of Christ. Again, if you are not a follower of Christ, you do whatever you want. But God's heart would be that you'd come into a relationship with him. Hmm. So, we're going to talk about three things today. First thing is this. Morals matter to God. Morals matter to God. God cares about what we think and do. This is what God says. Jeremiah 6 says this. This is God saying, Are they ashamed of their loathsome conduct? No. They have no shame at all. They, they do not even know how to blush. Just stop and think about that. We well, you know when you're a kid, you're little, you know, you blush and stuff. But all of a sudden, when you start going different, all of a sudden, you're, you don't shame, have any shame at all. This is what this verse is saying. God is saying, "No, they sh- have, sh- they have no shame at all, and they don't even know how to blush anymore." This is God. That's not me saying that. God said this. God is saying that we we have no shame at all. And we don't even blush anymore. Why? Why do we do that? Why? Why? For some reason, listen. For some reason, we feel like it is so much funner. Is funner a word? I'm not really sure. Okay. (laughs) It's more fun to be right at the edge. Not falling off, but just doing the sin just so close. And God says, no, that's not my heart for you. I don't want you to, because if you start going towards the edge and you you, you haven't fallen off yet, but at some point you will. And when that happens, it's not going to be good. And God says, I've got something better for you. I've got something. I've created you. I, I created your life. I know how you're supposed to be. But for some reason, you're going the opposite way. And you think you know better than God. Can I tell you, you will never know more than God. God knows everything. In fact, let me just tell you, right now, right now, in this venue, in the East venue, and those are online, right now, right now, God is here. In all of these places, listening to us, hearing this, knowing your thoughts going, man, I came to the wrong church. I mean, that's, that's probably what you're thinking, and God knows you're thinking that. But here's the thing. Morals matter to God. God cares about our morals. He wants us to do the right things. He wants to do the God things. That's what he wants you and I to do. Hmm. Are we... Are we doing what God wants us to do? Let me give you, let me give you a story. Um, there is an older couple. Uh, they couldn't drive their car anymore because they, they just couldn't do it because of their age. And so what they decided to do is this. 
um, they decided that they were going to, to get, they're going to hire somebody that will drive the, their car around to wherever they need to go. But uh, they, they got three people to come uh, to look for the, to become the, to do, to do the thing. Uh, to, and so anyway, long story short, the first guy comes in and the lady says, well, um, you know what, I got to tell you, my car is very important. And she said to the first guy, um, she said, uh, my car, it goes here this way, and then it turns, and there is a brick wall. Now, I do not want my car scratched on that, on that wall. So how close or whatever can you be there? And the first guy goes, well, I can get your car a foot away from that wall. And she goes, okay, that's, that's pretty good. And then the second person says, you know what, I can do, I can get six inches close to that wall. And she goes, wow, okay. And then the third guy, third guy said, ma'am, he says, you know what, I understand that you are, you are very protective of your car. And I agree with you. And so I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something. I'm not going to park it anywhere near that wall. I'm going to park it way over here. Who did they pick? One, two, or three? Three. That's what, that's what we have to do. See, we try to get close, just close, close to the wall where we're going to get scraped or whatever. And, but for some reason, we don't think about being way over here with God. Instead, we just look, how far can I get to sin? Instead, here is God. We need to be have, looking towards God. It's all about God. It's not about us. But for some reason, we think it is. So instead of, instead of how far can I go, that's the wrong question. The question is how close can I stay to God? That's what we got to talk about. We think... I can be right here. How far can I go but not fall over into sin? Instead, we should be talking about how close can I stay to God? We think, oh God, I love you, I love you, but I just want to do this over here, and, I just, and it's, going to, it's probably going to hurt me, but that's okay. It's going to be fun. We've got to pause, and we've got to say, this isn't God's heart. This isn't God's heart. God wants us to be closer to him, not closer to sin. And sin is always around us. Satan is always around us. But I'm going to tell you, God is bigger and better than Satan. And we need to have God in us. We need to be closer to God, not closer to sin. But for some reason, we go to sin. Why is that? Why do we do that? Let me give you a story. Another story. This, is, this one was a true story, actually. Um, most, of my, most of them aren't, usually. <laughs> anyway, um, Pastor Rollin, uh, he was our music pastor, and, but he retired about a year ago or so. Uh, but he's still in the church. But he told me a story one time. He, him and his family, they lived up in... Um, up in at, where is it? Somewhere. Uh, Alaska, there it was. Alaska. And so one day he came home from his house and he looked out his back door and in his back door he saw a moose. Now, has anybody ever seen a moose? Those things can be vicious. They can be mean, right? So here's Roland. He looks out the window and he sees this moose. And he's looking at that and he goes, hey, he says to his wife, he goes, I, I'm gonna, I got this apple. I'm going to go out and, and feed him. And so he goes out there, and all of a sudden, when he gets out there, here's the moose. The moose sees him with this apple, and he starts charging Roland. Rolling, Roland goes, there's a, there's a tree right in the middle of the, of, the, of the place, and he grabs that tree, and he goes around and around and around and around, and the moose goes around and around and around and around and around and around, just goes over and over, and finally, 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 the moose gets tired, and I'm pretty sure Roland got tired too. And, <clears throat> and the moose stopped. And Roland did probably the st-
stupidest thing he's ever, well, now probably not the stupidest thing he's ever done. He's done a lot of stupid things. But anyway, but one of the things that he did was stupid. When, they, when that moose stopped, he took that apple and he threw it at him. And that moose came charging. And he started going around and 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 around. And, around and, around and, around. and finally, Rollin goes over and jumps over the fence and gets freed. And why am I telling you that stupid true story? Why am I telling you that story? Why do we do that? Because here's the, here's the thing. Don't feed the moose. <laughs> don't, don't feed the sin. That's what we do. That's what we do. We, we try to pretend that it's not, but we know what we're doing. We know what we're doing, and God knows it too. You can never fool God. You can never fool God. God knows everything. He knows everything before it's even thought in your mind. He knows everything. But for some reason, we think we can fool God. God, I love you, and I'm just going to go over here and have an adultery. What? How? How can that work? It can't. Are you a follower of Christ, or are you not? We've got to, we're not like in the middle. There's no middle ground. Are you a follower of Jesus Christ, or are you not? And you got to figure that out. Because so many people, so many people just want to be playing at the edge, hoping that they don't fall off in the sin. And God is saying, come closer to me. Come closer to me. That is what God's calling you and I to do. This is what we got to be doing. If we are truly a follower of God, this is what we've got to do. And some of you guys, listen, listen, some of you are saying, Mark, come on, that's just, that's just preacher talk. That, you know, that, you know that's, that's not in the Bible. Hmm, can I give you a verse? Ephesians 5.3, it says this, But beyond, beyond you, there must not be even a hint of what? Sexual immorality. This is God's word. God is telling us we should know this if we're actually in God's Word sometimes. But for some reason, we don't. We don't get in God's Word. We just come to, the, come to church on Sunday, and we just talk to it, and we tell you about it. But I'm going to tell you, if you got in God's Word, it would change everything. It would change everything in your life. It would change everything. This is God's heart. He says... There shouldn't be even a hint, not even a hint, of sexual immorality. Wow. Just think about that. That's just amazing. Second thing we're talking about is intimacy. Intimacy matters to God. Intimacy matters. It actually matters to God. Let me give you a verse. 1 Corinthians 6, and I'm put up on the screen here. It says this. uh, Do you not know that he who himself... Uh, who does unite himself with the prostitute is one with her in body. But it is said, the two will become one flesh. In other words, was talking about, God is saying, sexual intimacy is between one man and one woman in one marriage. It's not like, it's not like, well, we're having sex because we're going we're to get married. Okay, well, when you have the marriage certificate, we'll let you know. See, some people will say stuff like this. They'll say, you know what, you know what, I don't want to... I, I want to have sex with my fiancé when you get married. Oh, four years. Okay, I don't care if it's four minutes. God is saying marriage. God is saying marriage. You have to be married. This is God's heart. This is what God is calling us to if we're followers of Christ. Now, again, if you are not a follower of Christ, you do whatever you want. 
But God it tells us in Scripture so many things about this. We just got to figure it out. We just got to look at it and see what is, what is God is doing. This is God's heart for some reason. He cares about you and he cares about me and all of us. And he wants us to be close to him, not to sin. But for some reason, we just kind of go more to sin than him. Why is that? It's because of sin. And we follow sin. But when you come into a relationship with God, God is there to help us. If you allow him to, if you allow him to. Some of you, some of you listen, some of you right now are, are probably saying in your mind, you go, you know, Mark, come on, you, you got to be kidding. This is, just, this is just stupid. I've been with X number of people, uh, having sex with different people, different stuff. Hasn't, hasn't affected me. Can I tell you what it's done? It's affected your heart. And it's affected your relationship with God. And God's heart is for you and I to come closer to God instead of closer to sin. That's it. That's what God is all about. He knows how he made you, what your life is supposed to be like, and how, to, how this life, this whole life, is supposed to work. But yet we turn around and do what we want to do. Why do we do that? It's because of sin. It's because of sin. And we, it, it bites us. Once we get done, we go, oh, then we feel so sorry. God, forgive me, forgive me. And, we, and then what we do? We go back and do it again. Oh, then God, forgive me again. And we just keep doing it over and over. We need to come to God. Literally come to God and have a relationship. Get rid of the sin and come to a true relationship with Jesus Christ. That is what God's calling us to. This is God's heart for you and for me. So three practical thoughts about premarital sex. So we're going to talk just a little bit about this. First, I'm going to put it on the screen here. A, number A is this. No matter what you've learned in, in eighth grade sex education... You can't have safe sex outside of marriage. Oh, you can keep them from getting pregnant. You can keep them from getting an STD or anything like that. But I'm going to tell you, you, you are not protecting your heart. You are not protecting your heart. And you're not protecting your relationship with Jesus Christ. This is what we got to do. We got to take this serious. We just think it's fun and games. No, this is a big deal to God. And if it's a big deal to God, it's got to be a bit big deal to us if we're a follower of Christ. That's what we've got to do. Let me give you the second thing, letter B. Second one is this. Premarital sex reduces a holy gift from God to just an act. God created, we talked about it a few weeks ago. God created Adam and Eve and he created them as marriage. But now, people today just use it as an act to anybody and anywhere. And they don't even blush anymore. Just think about that. Just think, what, it, what is God thinking about this? What is God wanting to do? You know what God wants to do? God wants to forgive you and me for our sins, our, all, in our sins, sexual sins or anything. But we have to come to him. We have to come to him and first say, God, I am a sinner. I need you. I need you, God. I need you. I need you so desperately, God. I need you. This is what God wants. God knows how he created this world. This world and sex is supposed to be for one man, one woman. In marriage. Well, I'm going to get married soon, you know, four or five months, four or five years. No. When you get married, 
That's when it, that's what God says. This, look, I didn't make the rules. This is God's, this is what God's telling us. Let me give you the third thing. Third thing is this. If you're a, if you're a Christ follower and you engage in premarital sex, you're setting a pattern of compromise. We are compromising. It's amazing. We should not do that. Unless, I mean, if you're, not a, if you're not a follower of Christ, you can do whatever you want. But if you are a follower of God, don't compromise. Don't, some of you got, well, pff, Mark, you could have told me this last week. I mean, I've already, I already messed up on that. And, we, and we, we do this a lot. We compromise. You, so we say, well, we're going we're gonna to get married Okay, well then you compromised, and so did your fiancé. And God is saying, that wasn't right. But you know what God does? When you come to him and he says, God, forgive me, you know what he does? He forgives. God forgives. This is what he does. He is a good, good father. And then I'm going to tell you as a pastor... As a pastor, I have heard, I mean, I'm, I'm not, I think I've heard everything I've ever heard. I've had so many people come to me uh, during this series and all the other series and our stuff. I always have people come t- tell me their stories, and, uh, and I'm just like, oh, my goodness, some of the stories I hear. And it's just hard. It's just hard, especially when you're talking about in marriage. And a lot of people, uh, marriage couples, they, they fight a lot. And some of you right here, or those that are in the other venue or in, and online, you are struggling in your marriage. You're married, but you're struggling. It's a struggling. Because one of the spouses would say, you know, I'd like a little more physical intimacy. I'm just pausing right now to see if anybody's going to say, amen, preacher, but I don't know. I, guess not okay but here's the thing God wants to be part of your marriage God wants to be part of that marriage you know I remember when my wife and I got married I talked about um, it was my wife it's me when we got married and it was God God was allowed to come into our marriage. And I'm telling you, it's the best thing ever. God knows how to make, make our lives worth the way he made it. But we think we can change it. And we can make it, make it better. And then you try that, what you think is better, and you're on the edge, and then you fall over, and then you're going, that didn't work. I should have listened to God. God wants to protect you. God wants to help you. You know, because why? Because, you know, Scripture tells us he's, he's, the, he's the heavenly what? Father. We're his kids. He loves us. He wants to help us. He wants us to do the right things. That's what fathers and mothers do. That's what parents do. This is what we got to do. We got to listen to God. Be with God. Not think that we can do whatever we want and sneak away and God will never know. God will always know. God will always know. Do you want to have a true relationship with God or not? This is what we got to talk about. This is what this is hard. This isn't this isn't fun. This is a hard thing to talk about today. And I want to tell you the third thing. The third thing is this: holiness matters to God. Do you know that? Holiness matters to God. Let me give you a verse in 1 Thessalonians 4. It says this. It is God's will that you should avoid sexual immorality, that each of you uh, should learn to control his own body in a way that is holy and honorable. God is saying we are to have our body holy and honorable, not in passionate lust like the heathens, who do not know God. For God did not call us to be impure, 
but to have a what? Say it with me. Holy life. God's calling us to have a holy life. Are we, are we doing that? Again, if you're a follower of Christ, you're probably doing it. Some of you that are followers of Christ are kind of on the get ready to fall off. And then there's those that are watching or are in the venues right now that just come to church. They don't know it. They don't have a relationship with God. And you can do whatever you want. But I'm going to tell you, this is what God wants. God has told us that we should have a holy life. You know? So this is one of the reasons <clears throat> that I do this, that I have a relationship with God because of my wife. Because I want to make sure that my wife knows that I love her. That when we have somebody, if I have a, a lady come into my office to talk about with, I will bring a third person. I will not be alone with a woman. I will not be with, not, nothing that I, like I'm scared of women. I just want to make sure that I'm protecting my wife. If I go out for, some, for lunch with somebody and, one of, and a lady gets in, that's totally fine, but I'm going to have a third person in there because I don't want anybody to ever say, hey, Mark, I, I saw the Mark with some other lady in his car. Whew, man, that's going to hurt my marriage. You're going, oh, Mark, come on, come on, let's be serious. Yeah, nobody's going to think about that. My wife might. Just think about it. If my wife is driving down the street and I'm driving down the street and all of a sudden I look over and I see there's a guy in her, you know, over there with her, in her car, I'm like, whoa, who's that guy? Right? So I don't want to do the same thing. So I'm going to have somebody else in there. I know that's probably overkill, but that's what I do. That's how I live. This is what I do it for my wife for my family, and for my God. I want to honor God any way I can. And my hope and my prayer is that you would want to do the exact same thing too. I'm going to tell you, parents, or those of you that are teenagers that someday will grow up and get, become parents, one day, your kids are going to say something to you. They say, Hey, Mom, how did you meet Dad? Or, Dad, how did you meet Mom? And you can either have a good story or a bad story. You can say, you know, you know, um, I met your mom at work or at church or somewhere else, you know, whatever, and, and I, I was a Christian and, and your mom's a Christian, and uh, we just we came together. Um, and if, if the kids are old enough, they'll probably, say, they'll probably ask questions like, um, did you, did dad or, or mom or whatever, did you, did you have sex before you got married? And you could say, no. No. I waited for the love of my life. I waited for the love of my life. And I want to honor her or him. And I want to honor God. And that is a beautiful thing to tell your kid. And I would hope you would say, if you said something like that, you can say, and when you grow up, I hope you'll do it the same way. Or you can tell your kids the, the flip side. How did you guys get together? Oh, we were, we were doing tequila shots. And it's just all, you know, all, and it's like, is that, that, isn't that going to be great? Wow. That's teaching the kids that that's all right. So we got to stop and think about what our actions do. It, it's for, not just for, our, for us, but for our family, for our kids, for our spouse, and for our God. We will do the right thing. And we will come in more into a relation with God and not sin. This is God's heart for you and for me. But let me tell you, some of you have gone through a lot of the stuff that I'm saying, and you're really ticking, you, you guys are ticked at me right now, because some of the stuff I'm talking about, you've done. But can I just give you some hope? I want to give you some hope. I want to give you a verse. 
if you have messed up already on all this stuff, I want to let you know 2 Corinthians 5.17. And here's what it says. Anyone, you know what who anyone is? Anyone. It's the person next to you, your spouse, the person you don't even know about. Every person. Any, anyone who belongs to Christ is a new person. The past is what? It's what? Gone. Say it loud. What? Gone. It's forgotten. It's gone. It's forgotten. And everything, everything, including your life and your relationship with God, everything is new. That's what God does. God will say, your sin is wrong. I said, but I'm going to tell you, when you come to me and you, you ask for forgiveness, God says, I forgot it. I forgot it. I don't remember that. What? You, did, you had a, an adultery? No, I don't remember that. God chooses to forgive and forget. That's amazing. And everything else is new. That's the God we have, and that's the God that you could have as well. Whoever God sets free is free indeed. Let's pray. So, Father, today, Lord, I know this last, last five weeks has been kind of hard, talking about some tough things that churches usually don't talk about. But, Lord, we pause today because we have to talk about this. Because there's always this struggle, there's always these things that they're going on that we have to pause and see, what does God say? And God, I thank you so much. Oh, I thank you so much that you are right there. You're always with us. You're always loving us. You're always telling us what we should or should not do. And Lord, I thank you so much for all that you've done. And Lord, for those that have been messed up on all these things that we've been talking about. Lord, when they come to you, you forget it. You drop it. Scripture tells us you put it in the deepest, dark, darkest sea so that, so that we can't get it. And God chooses to forgive and forget. God, thank you. You love us for so much, and I don't understand why. We are just a bunch of messes. But God, you love us, and you care about us, and you want us to have a relationship with you. And Lord, I know that there are some in the venues and those online that are already do, but I know that there, there's others that are in the venues and online that hasn't. Or maybe they had a relationship at least one time, but they... They lost it. And they come back to you right now, at this moment, right now. They're saying, God, I'm one of those persons that they're talking about today. God, I have messed up my life. I've messed up a bunch of stuff. God, I need you. I need you. I need you. And God always says, yes, yes, yes. takes the sin and buries it in the deepest dark of the sea. And he says, I don't remember it. Come be my child. Lord, I thank you that you love us. I don't know why, but you do. And I'm so thankful for all that you've done. And we celebrate you. In your name we pray. Amen.